Hi again, everyone. I'm Ali Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Anonymous, and here's her story. Dear Ali, I discovered your channel at, late last year, and I've been recently viewing your videos on a regular basis. I have to be honest and say, at first, your level of emotion was a bit over the top for me, but I continued to listen because you have a great ability of interpreting the situation and, anti and anticipating what led to a situation or what is likely to happen in a situation. I also appreciate the fact that you are very honest and straightforward in sharing your interpretations and opinions and your emotions may be what helps others get out of the terrible situations. I just made a donation through your PayPal account and would greatly appreciate your insight into my situation. The reason and the reason why I get um, my emotions go is because I'm putting myself in your position. OK, which isn't a very hard thing to do, because most of the time I've been in these positions and it's very easy. It's very easy to have your emotions come up, which is why this channel, I think, is, is different than, than maybe therapy and, and other channels, because that's how you're getting your validation. You're not only getting your validation in what I'm saying, but how I'm saying it, you know, the same way that the narcissist gets their supply off you where when they're wrong, and even though they're wrong, they'll say, well, it's not it's not what you did, it's how you did it or what you said. It, it, it's, it's the same concept, two sides of the same coin. I have thought about writing you several times now about my husband's family, which is composed of an overt narcissistic father who, also, who may also be a sociopath, a covert narcissist mother who plays the victim well, a scapegoat sister who appears to have continued the abuse in her family and maybe a lesbian and my golden child husband who was programmed to be financially responsible for his entire family oh god before i get to that saga sometime in the future i am hoping you can give me some insight on my own family situation i am one of four children i have an older brother an older sister and a younger brother young okay so you're the third gotcha Older brother, older sister, younger brother. Gotcha. Our parents married shortly after my mother became pregnant with my older brother in 1964. <clears throat> Both of my parents came from troubled homes. My, mother's fa my father's mother abandoned him at the age of two, leaving him with his alcoholic father and upper-class wealthy grandparents. Okay. Father's mother abandoned him at the age of two with his alcoholic father and upper class wealthy. Okay. So, so your father's mom ran out on him. My father's father later remarried and my father was treated as an outcast by his stepmother. Pretty typical. My father has, has since said it was probably better for him that he was not a child he was not a child of his stepmother because she left him alone and was very demeaning on his step siblings. I believe that my father did not know how to show love and affection because of his upbringing, but is a good and kind person. My mother was the middle child of seven children in a household where her father, who was the elected sheriff of the county, had repeated affairs. Her parents argued and fought often and sometimes got physical. My mother was treated as if she didn't matter and in her teen years spent her weekends cooking in her parents' tavern for Friday night fish fries and Sunday chicken dinners while her siblings were out with their friends. My mom's younger brothers adored her and told me they would come to the tavern on a Saturday morning and she would give them each a quarter to get popcorn and snacks for the Saturday matinee while she worked all day. I believe my parents were good people that were that were damaged during their childhood and were able to and were unable to help each other overcome their past. See here's here's right here. And this is where I question. Because you're already looking to give your parents a pass for your shitty for your shitty upbringing. Because you wouldn't be writing to me and talking about your family if your upbringing wasn't already shitty. Okay? Here's the difference. And before I even get into your story, Anonymous, here's the difference before I even get into it. 
You're writing to me for a reason. You're writing to me because you know these behaviors are fucked up. Why do you know these behaviors are fucked up and your parents didn't? What's different? What's different? You know what fucked up is. They know what fucked up is. At some point in life, in early adulthood, you making they make a choice. I don't even know if that's where the story is going or not yet. But you're already looking to make excuses for your parents. All this lead up, you gave me, basically you gave me three paragraphs of lead up, I guess, to excuse your parents' shitty behavior and your share your parents' shitty parenting. I'm guessing. The first five years of my life were relatively peaceful. My father worked on the railroad and my mother was a stay-at-home mom. My father did not interact with us much when we were young. Our mother spent every day with us and tried to instill love and kindness in each one of us. Unfortunately, like my grandfather, my father was an alcoholic. My father was never a mean drunk. Rather, my mom's family nicknamed him, nicknamed him Smiley because as he drank, he became happier. By the time I was three or four, I would wake up in, in the night and hear my mother ask my father how they were going to pay the bills. Where were we going to get the money for the winter coats for the four of us, etc.? My father always told my mother not to worry. These are my earliest memories. During these discussions, I would speak to Jesus in my head and was comforted because I didn't completely feel alone. My mother later told me that my father would not come home the day he got his paycheck. Instead, he would go to the bar and spend much of his paycheck before he came home. She also told me she often, she often worried my father would get killed on the railroad because at the time it was common for men to drink on the job. Well, I'll tell you this. I'm sure exactly where you're from in the United States, but I, I'm, I'm assuming it's the United States working on the railroad. Those guys made a lot of money. A lot of money. And here's the thing you got to keep in mind. You hear your mother talk about not having winter coats for the four of you. Right? And then your father would say, don't, don't worry about it. Did you ever not actually not have the coats or not actually not have the things you needed? You see, one of the tricks a covert narcissist does, and I believe it's Kind of how you described your mother. Uh, I might be wrong. It might have been. Uh, no, that was your his, your, your husband's parents. One of the tricks covert narcissists do is is to talk out, have conversations with someone, another adult, out loud, with the intention of you to hear it, of you hearing it. Okay, so she's making these making these accusations, trying to make you worry as a child. Where now. If you legitimately went without coats and went without things because of your father's drinking, okay, well, you know, you know how I feel about alcohol and alcoholics and just drinking in general. I don't particularly do it or like it, and it's a narcissistic and selfish thing, and there's a lot of excuses made around it. And if that's the case, fuck him. And if you were really going without coats and food and clothes and whatever else, Okay, but if you never did, and then you're still remembering this, then your mother was doing having those conversations with the intention of you hearing them. That's how a covert narcissist works. Okay, making you think you quote unquote overheard something that you weren't, it wasn't, a, you didn't overhear it, you were meant to hear it. Pity me, pity us. That's the intent. <clears throat> Sometime around the age of seven, my father didn't come home, okay? My mother told us my father was out of town on the railroad. I later learned my mother had told my father she couldn't do it anymore and wanted a divorce. Mm -hmm. My father then admitted himself to the hospital and stopped drinking. My father wanted to come back home after the hospital, but my mother wanted my father to, my, but my mother wanted my father to agree she could manage the checkbook and get her driver's license. 
My father said no to both, and my mother told him he could not come home. Okay. Hmm. For a couple of years after that, my father lived in a men's boarding house above a tavern, but remained sober. I originate from Wisconsin, where Wisconsin, where taverns are plentiful and drinking is common. My mother obtained her driver's license and began working as a bartender at her aunt's tavern about a mile from our home. It was a local tavern that I could walk to after school and watch a group of old men play cards, listen to music, and tell my mother what a beautiful daughter she had, to which my mother would reply, she looks like me, don't you think? About a year, after about a year, my great aunt closed her tavern and my mother began working at another tavern further away. That is when things started to change significantly. One Friday night when I was, a, when I was 10 years old, my mother did not come home from work. My older sister and I were getting hungry and I gave up waiting for, for our mother around 8 p.m. and made ourselves something to eat. My younger brother said she knew our mom would be home soon and would wait for her. Around 11 p.m. that night, my younger brother asked me if I could make him something to eat, so I made him a grilled cheese sandwich. So you're home alone at 10 years old at night while your mother's working at a bar? That seems like an odd place for your mother to work based on your father being an alcoholic and her having to throw him out of the house over it. And, and then she goes and works in a bar. It just doesn't make sense. Like it sounds to me like your father may have drank but it sounds to me like your mother may be looking for dick and attention. She may have just been looking to upgrade. Around 11 p.m. that night, my younger brother asked me if I could make him something to eat, so I made him a grilled cheese sandwich. When my mom came home later that, later that weekend, I asked her where she was, and she told me she got lost. I bet she did. Probably got lost choking on some fucking cock. That's what she got lost on. And she left the tenure. Well, you said you said you had older brother. You had an older brother, older sister as well, 64. Older brother was born in 64. I don't know. I'm assuming you're probably around my age, a little old, little older, a little younger. If you're 10, dick and attention. This started to become a regular occurrence. Of course it did. At the same time, my mother's loser friends would, would call and ask for a babysitter. My older sister babysat for a couple of my mom's friends first. And one night when my sister was already booked, already booked a friend asked if if I could babysit her 15 month old daughter on New Year's Eve. Know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like to me, and this I could be wrong again, and it sounds like to me the reason your father didn't want your mother to have a driver's license is because she was going to go out fucking drinking and whoring all over town. The reason your father didn't want your mother controlling the checkbook is so she couldn't go out and do this type of shit. It's not to say that your father may or may not have been an alcoholic piece of shit himself, being that he checked himself into a hospital, but, but, how do you throw your, how does she go from throwing your dad out for being a piece of shit alcoholic to getting a job in a bar and leaving her kids home alone to fend with themselves for, for days at a time while she can go get dick and attention? She needed you to overhear those conversations, Anonymous, about your father, about not having coats, about not having coats and not having the things you needed so you wouldn't call for your father when she threw him out, when she went on her dick quest. That's what those conversations were about. Your father may have been an alcoholic, but you'd have to tell me whether you actually went without things. Because it just sounds like you didn't go without anything 
until you lived with your home, lived alone with your mother. I accepted the job on the condition I could bring my younger brother with me because I did not leave, like leaving him home alone. I was 10 years old and he was nine years old. The single, attractive, promiscuous, cokehead mother, what a shock, <clears throat> was impressed by my concern for my brother and I became her regular babysitter. My sister was angry that I took her job. Later, our next door neighbors began asking me to babysit too instead of my sister. The day after Christmas, when I was 11 years old, the social services came to our house and told my mother if she did not move us to better living conditions, they would take her children away from her. By then, our house was in complete disrepair. So that didn't happen when your father was living there. My mother, who had once kept the clean house and stopped trying to clean our house, and the clutter and the dirt were horrendous, so much so that at 10 years of age, I started to pull all-nighters and trying to clean the house while everyone slept. Huh. Sounds to me like your father knew something of why not to give your mother money or not to let her have a fucking driver's license. Again, I don't know what happened to your father, so I don't know if we hear about him again. <clears throat> but your mother was setting you up so she can go get some, to turn you against your father, so she can go find some dick and attention. We had only one toilet that did not flush, a bathtub that did not drain, and a refrigerator that did not work. Because it was winter, we were able to use a snowbank to keep our milk cold. I could see myself under our Christmas tree gathering up what gifts I received for Christmas. As we were told, we had to vacate that day. My grandmother took all five of us into her two-bedroom, one-bath home where we lived for the next six months. My grandmother later told me that my mother was told she owned our home in her own name and it was still titled in my fa and it was still titled in my father's name at that time she would be eligible for a grant money to make the home make our home livable again my mother told my father what was going on and my father deeded the house to my mother okay so your father did he gave her the house gave her the house My grandmother was hospitalized for 10 days during those six months we lived with her. When she returned home, she was welcomed by a heap of dirty clothes in her laundry room and dirty dishes in her sink. I can still see her standing in the middle of the heap when I got home from school one day. I thought to myself how wrong it was for my mother to do that to my grandmother. And from that day forward, I kicked things into higher, into higher gear. When I returned to our home after it was renovated, I took over cleaning the house, doing laundry, mowing the lawn, and shoveling the sidewalk again. Now, remember how this started. This started with her excusing her mother and father's behavior for their upbringing. Yet it's the grandmother who upbringing, who raised the mother or father, whichever grandmother it is. I'm assuming it's the mother's mother. Responsible for the upbringing. Does that make sense? Your logic doesn't make sense here, Anonymous. These are choices your mother made, okay? And the reason you're looking to give her some kind of quarter or, or throw shade on, throw her some kind of shade, is because she was setting you up as a child to make her make you think she's been a victim. She wasn't a victim. She knows how to clean a house. She knows how to take care of her children. Seemed like she knew how to do it when your father was home. As you're hearing her, well, how are we going to pay for coats and everything? Well, it doesn't seem like any of that was a problem while your father was still there. 
And what it sounds like, if I had to venture a guess, your father, in order to save your mother or save the marriage, went in and got went into the hospital for alcoholism. Okay, did his part. But your mother, no, your mother still wanted the driver's license and the money so she can run off and do what she had to do. And your father wasn't going to have it. When we returned to our home after it was renovated, I took over cleaning the house, doing the laundry, mowing the lawn, and shoveling the sidewalk. My mother would ask my brothers to mow the lawn before she got home from work, but they would play out, play two out of three cribbage and turn into four out of seven cribbage with the loser mowing the grass. Inevitably, my brothers would still be playing cribbage late into the afternoon, and I would give up waiting on them to mow the lawn mow the lawn for them as I didn't want my mom to come home from work and not have it done. My mother would usually catch me mowing the lawn, the last bit of lawn and ask me what I was doing, but she would never scold my brothers for lying around all day. <clears throat> A couple times I ran an experiment and would not wash dishes. Rather than anyone else helping out, my family would eat out, eat out of every dish, pot, etc., over washing dishes. I only did that a couple times because it took me hours to wash every pot, pan, plate, etc. When I and when I asked my sister or brother for help, they would tell me that I didn't need help. When I would cry and tell them it was too much for me, my younger brother would tell tell me that I was mentally ill and I should seek psycholo psychological help. My older sister would tell me I didn't do a good job anyway and I should stop trying. My older brother was usually silent. It wasn't until he was in college and visiting home for the weekend when my sister and younger brother were being cruel to me that he told them they should appreciate all the work I did around the house for them. I appreciated him speaking up that day, but it didn't change anything. <clears throat> Throughout this time, my mother started not coming home more and more frequently and sometimes would be gone for an entire weekend. <clears throat> When she returned, I would ask her where she was and she would say she got lost. I would tell her next time she should make sure there is milk in the fridge for her children before she gets lost. By the age of 12, I was working several babysitting jobs in addition to maintaining her house and had my own money to buy food during these weekends. She abandoned us. My mother and older brother often borrowed money from me and most likely took my money when I was not at home as some summers, it would be common for me to babysit up to 90 hours a week, <clears throat> the majority of that time at the house next door to ours. Technically, my mother gave me an allowance, but never had but never had the money to pay me. It became a joke between us when she would sometimes give me a raise for my work around the house. Every once in a while, my mother would give me a small token gift like a ring or a barrette or a barrette or an ankle bracelet and tell me she appreciated my hard work. She told me I could not tell my sister or younger brother that she gave me a gift because she did not want to get them upset. Somehow I was able to maintain good grades on top of my responsibility. Hmm. Hmm. Again, she would tell you something kind of like how you would overhear the conversations about coats, not being able to have coats. And then she would tell you, She's giving you something that, and not to tell your brothers and sisters because it's something they're not having, they're not getting. Your mother is nothing more than a manipulative borderline. It's all manipulative. It's all manipulation, manipulation with her. Everything out of her mouth is a con. Everything out of her mouth is a manipulation. Everything. <clears throat> and it's not because of how she was raised. It's because of choices she made. She chooses to act like this. What fucking adult, and I'm assuming in the early 70s, doesn't know it's not cool to leave a fucking 10-year-old home? I mean, are you kidding me? For a weekend while you're out running around with dick and it for dick and attention. Come on. My sister was born with a speech impediment. My mother was the only person who could understand her until she was in second grade. 
I was told the day my sister graduated from speech therapy, the therapist and my mother both cried as they worked together with my sister for years. My sister struggled in school and hated the fact that I got good grades. My sister often told my mother that I was her favorite child. My mother would tell my sister that she did not have any favorite children. She loved us all the same. When we brought our report cards home, my mom would not congratulate me in front of anyone, but she would tell my sister that she knew she worked hard and that she was doing a good job at school. My sister learned quickly that she could not get more attention by being dumb than she would otherwise and put very little effort into her schooling until she was an adult. She later graduated with honors at our local technical school in both welding and civil engineering and has since admitted she saw no benefit in working hard at school when we were young. Around the age of 12, my sister kicked me out of our bedroom. She told me it was her room and I wasn't allowed to sleep in it. I was able to manage because my mother was spending less time at home, so I slept in her room. From about the age, from about, from the age of about 12 until my mother's death at the age of 17, my mother dated a man who I believed was the devil. <clears throat> I tried not to expose the fact that I did not like him, but one day he was saying hateful things about my sister and I broke. I told him I love <clears throat> I love my sister, but I hated him. After that, he often told me what a spoiled rotten bitch I was and that I was fat and ugly and a disappointment to my mother. Some of my mom's friends who I babysat for told me he had, he had both a cocaine and heroin addiction. In addition to the verbal abuse, he did terrible things like setting our house on fire in hopes of getting insurance money, stealing my and your father was the one who had to be thrown out huh, for alcoholism. But your mother's a cokehead. She's with a cokehead and a heroin addict who's burning the house down. All those things you were hearing as a child, everything out of your mother's mouth is a lie. In addition to the verbal abuse, she did all right, it's terrible things for sending, setting the house on fire in hopes of getting insurance companies, stealing my sister's tuition money for technical school, stealing medication, which was prescribed to me at the age of 12 for migraine headaches, most likely caused from our stressful life, stealing a football I won in the sixth grade, which was autographed by the entire Packer football team, and then coach Bart Starr, and physically abusing my mother. One night, my mom and her boyfriend came home in the middle of the night. Typically, my mom never had men spend the night at our house, and I'm not sure what happened that night. My mother woke me up and told me that she and her boyfriend wanted to go to bed. I told my mother I was a child and needed my sleep and refused to get out of, out of bed. I told her her boy. I told her, tell her boyfriend that she could not get me up. Her boyfriend yelled at her, and the next thing I knew, I could hear them having sex on our couch. He was slapping her and calling her a bitch the entire time. I wanted to call the police, but I knew my mother would freak out if I did. Instead, around 4 a.m., I got up and got dressed and was brushing my hair in the bathroom when my mom came in the room crying. Hell, I, I, held, I held my mother while she cried, but I, not think, I, don't, I do not think she knew I was hugging her. Her boyfriend came into the bathroom and asked my mother if she wanted any lasagna, which was the only thing we had in the fridge for dinner that night. I told her, I told her boyfriend to leave my mother alone. My mother jumped back and asked me what I was doing up. I told her I heard everything and I was leaving. I told her I did not want to live this way any longer. My mother told me to go back to bed while she took a drive to clear her head. I love my mother and went back to her room and, and she asked and went to her room as she asked. As soon as her car pulled out of the driveway, I went out to the kitchen and told my mom's boyfriend to leave. He started telling me what a spoiled bitch I was and I resorted and I retorted, yeah, I live in the lap of luxury. Get out of our house. He started throwing his boots at me and other household objects. The entire time I kept repeating, get out of our house. His last, his last attempt to stay in our house was to tell me that our mother would be upset with me if she came home and he was not there. 
I stick to my I stuck to my gun and got con- and, and continued to tell him to leave. Once he left, I began doing the laundry and cleaning the house. When my mother returned, she was still crying. I asked her if she was upset that I made him leave, and she said uh, she was thankful. I put her to bed and continued cleaning. I'm just going to get to the end of this paragraph. When I went to hang the laundry on our clothesline outside, I found my mom's boyfriend, I knew it, passed out in her car. After hanging the laundry, I woke him up and told he had to leave. He was yelling at me profusely and echoed in our neighborhood. Neighborhood. Eventually, he left. Later, I found out my older brother, older sister, and younger brother heard everything. As how how they how could they not? Our house was only twelve hundred square feet. None of my siblings came out to stand next to me, and and the next day, after not sleeping all night, my siblings treated me like nothing happened. It was never discussed by any of us. Let me explain to you what's going on, what happened here. Okay, again, just like your mother wanted you to overhear her talking to your father about not having clothes, coats and all that. Your mother wanted you to overhear her having sex with him. Do you think that I'm telling you that's how they have sex? And she put on this show as a benefit to you. And then she ran off because she wanted you to get rid of them. Just like she wants you to clean the house, do the laundry, do the cooking. Once again, she wants you to do it. And the rest of your siblings have learned from her how to get you to do all their fucking dirty work. You really believe your mother was upset by all that? Bullshit. Bullshit. I think that's how they have sex. And when you wouldn't get out of the bed, they're like, fuck it. And once your mother got hers, here's why. Your mother, your mother didn't usually bring them home, okay? Because your mother liked to be able to leave whenever she wanted to, okay? Which is exactly what she did. She left. Now, for whatever reason, they ended up at your house because who knows, maybe they couldn't go to his house, something was going on, okay? But when she fucks him at his house, she always has the option to leave. When she fucks him at her house, he's there. Unless you overhear all this, she cries, runs away, and makes you get rid of her. The narcissist never stops the manipulation. Never, never, never. In my sophomore year of high school, my mother was diagnosed with stage three lung cancer and given three to six months to live. My mother told my father she was terminally ill and did not have the means to pay for her medical expenses. Despite my mom having her snake of a boyfriend, my father told my mother he would remarry her. And shortly thereafter, they married but continued their separate lives. Wow, your father sounds like a real piece of shit. Sounds like a real piece of shit here. Your mother wouldn't happen to have been a chain smoker, right? Coke, heroin, dick attention. I'm sure that has 70s had to be cigarettes. Not that you knew they were as bad as you know now, but... And after all that, your, your dad, your alcoholic, piece of shit dad, who's spending all your money and can't even afford coats, he marries her and lets her, lets her keep living separate lives. Deeded the house to her even after it fell apart. Didn't want her to get her driver's license. Didn't want to give her control of the money. See how well that worked out, huh? See what she does with that. <clears throat> I 
Despite my mom having her, oh, wait, hold on. My father's health insurance picked up my mother immediately, and she was able to receive proper medical care. <clears throat> About a month later, hospice was brought in, and my mother told me, my sister and younger brother, we were going to have visitors. About a month later, hospice was brought in, and my mother told me, my sister, and my younger brother, we were going to have visitors and have a family meeting. My older brother was away at college at this time. My sister and my brother picked a fight with my mother and stormed out of the house before the social worker and nurse from hospice arrived. The topic of discussion was the changes we were facing and how to ensure my mom had proper care at home. They asked my mom who would be her primary caregiver. She told them I would be her caregiver. Both the social worker and nurse told her they didn't think it was a good idea because of my age. After exchanging their thoughts, my mother put her hand on my knee and told them I would know what to do and was capable of caring for her. It was during the late nights of staying up with her that my mother apologized for taking away my childhood and told me if she could go back, she would do it differently. Bullshit. And there's your proof that she knew what she was fucking doing. I get it. She's trying to apologize. But that's what narcissists will do on their deathbed. But really what it is is a gaslight. They gaslight you on their deathbed. Really. Really. But yet, she, if she can go back and change it, she'd do it differently. But yet you're the one she forced to care for her. Huh? At 17. Where is the piece of shit boyfriend? She also repeatedly told me she was worried about my sister and younger brother and asked me to take care of them when she was gone. Unfortunately, because of my mom's poor choices in her large family, many of whom lived a few miles, within a few miles of us, had little to do with her outside of the holidays. My mother lived about four more months. During that time, my sister and brother often picked fights with her, and my sister physically attacked me once when she found me studying in her room. My younger brother had to pull her off me, but by then she had already ripped my necklaces off my neck and bit through my clothing so hard she broke my skin. Later I learned my sister may have been using cocaine at that time. The month before my, our mother died, my mom asked my younger brother what he wanted for his birthday. While lying in a hospital bed in our living room with oxygen tubes in her nose, she explained to him that he would get his gift a day late because she would not receive her disability check until the day after his birthday. My brother got an argument with my mother and told her if she didn't have a gift ready, he didn't want anything from her. Where do you think your, your siblings got this entitlement from in the first place? To me, that's karma. You know, because your mother created those monsters. In the same way that your mother created you to be the subservient, the subservient Cinderella type, your mother also created these entitled monsters and did nothing about them for, for, for over a decade while she ran around, did coke, did drugs, smoked, God gave herself lung cancer and looked for dick and attention. I told my brother to be nicer to our mother, and he called me a bitch and told me to mind my own business. I went back to my room and continued stuttering until I heard a strange noise coming from the living room. I found my mother hyperventilating because my brother, who was not yet 16, did not have a driver's license, stormed out of the house and got into an old, unregistered and uninsured car, car he had recently bought from a friend for a few hundred dollars. He was able, I was able to calm my mom so she could breathe properly, but she was worried about my brother. My sister was out with my mother's car, so I had no way of trying to find my brother. When my sister returned, I told her what had happened. My sister called me a bitch and laughed at the thought of our brother storming out. As I took the keys from her, my brother returned home. Four weeks later, my mother was transported to the hospital by ambulance while my father drove me to the hospital. Every time my mom was hospitalized, my father took off from work and made sure we had food and transportation to see her in the hospital. 
on day five of that hospital stay, I visited my mother and brought her my report card. She looked at it and told me how proud she was of me. I knew something was up because no matter how good my report card ever was, she never said much. She then told me her boyfriend needed to speak to me. I went into the hall and her boyfriend proceeded to tell me my mother was not expected to live through the weekend. I told him I understood, but he insisted I didn't. I did it because I did my best not to show any show him any emotion. I then went in to see my mom for a bit. She again told me how proud she was of me and told me I needed to inform my family. I didn't even cry till I got to the car and then I broke down. I called my mom's younger brother first, who lives on the West Coast. He and I cried for some time. <clears throat> When morning came, I went to my grandmother's house and told her, and then to my mom's younger sister's house to tell her, then to my mom's older sister's house to tell her, and to call my older brother at college to tell him. It was the first time my older brother told me he loved me. My aunt wanted to tell my sister and younger brother, but I couldn't, but I told her I couldn't tell him. Oh, wait, my sister wanted me to tell my sister and younger brother, but I told her I couldn't tell them. I did not want to share that kind of emotion with them as I was not sure what hurtful thing they might say or do. My mother passed away five days later. About a month after that, our dad moved into the house with us. He told me he would take my sister, take my and my sister's room so she and I could have the larger master bedroom. I cleaned out our mother's room alone. My sister didn't want to do any of that work and set up our bedroom with two single beds. My sister would stay home sometimes, and other times she would be gone for days. In short order, she moved in with her boyfriend. About a year after our mother died, when I was a senior in high school, my sister called home as I was leaving for school. She asked me what I was doing. I knew something was wrong because she rarely talked to me, and she knew I was. it was a school day, and I didn't miss school. I told her I was going to school, and she said she needed to talk to me. I told her I could come home during Spanish class and I would meet her at home. I was so responsible, the principal of our school took me at my word when I said I had to leave school during the day. My sister was in tears. She told me how her boyfriend threatened, threatened all night and physically sat on her so she could not leave. I told her she needed to get out of that relationship. She asked me how, I told her, she asked me how, and I told her, that while he was at work that night, I would come to her apartment and pick her up while she gathered her belongings. Why didn't you just say, go to your dad? Your dad doesn't seem like a bad person in any of this, to be very honest with you. I told her I would help her get to and from work and school so that she would not be dependent upon him for a ride. I was able to get her home that evening and for the next several months, my dad and I tried to help her with transportation and spoke with her boyfriend for her. My sister and I have similar voices, so when I told him I was done with him, she, he thought she was saying it to him. I had to do that for months before he stopped calling. My sister became somewhat nicer to me, but not much. So your sister moved into your mother's role. So once your mother died, your sister moved into your mother's role taking advantage of you. And lo, lo and behold, she starts becoming nicer. Wow, what a shock. I went to college and married my junior year to a man I should not have married. During college, I was diagnosed and hospitalized with a rare autoimmune autoimmune neuromuscular disorder that caused a full body nervous system attached, which handicapped me for about a decade. My face was paralyzed for about six months. I will never forget, like Bell, whether I get, or Bell's palsy, something like that. I will never forget the day my sister visited me in the hospital and the nurse asked me to smile. They did that several times throughout the day to see if my paralysis was getting worse. My sister laughed and said my face looked gross. The nurse was ready to smack her. A couple weeks later, when my sister and I were shopping for a wedding dress, were shopping for wedding dresses for me, I told my sister how hurtful that was. She told me she was nervous and afraid I might die. I was, 
I expected, I was expected to stop breathing at any time. She said she lost mom and wasn't ready to lose me. I told her I forgave her. Two and a half years later, when I was starting law school, my sister visited me and I was going through my photo albums and found a picture of me shortly after the onset of my illness. She looked at the picture and said, gross out loud. I never said anything to her that day and obviously I've never forgotten it. During law school, I separated from my husband who seemed to have a difficult time with my becoming healthier and didn't like my bettering myself. I had to work three jobs to get through my last year of law school alone. My father didn't say much of anything to me about my father didn't say much of anything to me about my decision. I wrote him a letter instead of telling him in person because I knew I would get emotional and my dad doesn't know what to do with emotions. My sister and younger brother told me I was a bitch and I was selfish. My older brother didn't say much. I later found out he didn't want me to marry my first husband, but didn't say anything to me about that. When I graduated from law school, my dad and both my brothers attended my graduation, but my sister said I make a big deal over nothing and did not attend. It's because it's just rank jealousy. About two months later, my sister said to me, if you cannot make a fucking marriage work, how the fuck can I make a fucking marriage work? I responded, fuck you, this is not about you. Shortly thereafter, I moved to Missouri where I attained my master's of tax law degree. That is where I met my now husband and father of my children. He and I received the same degree. He was, I was first in our class, I was afraid of my husband. Then my boyfriend would be upset would be upset because I was doing better than him, but he wasn't. He started calling me his number one girl. After graduation, my husband and I moved to Florida. While I had a back, I had a firm back home that offered me a position, I felt it was better for me to distance myself from my family. I got a position at a large firm and passed the bar exam in Florida. I married my second husband and Together, we worked hard to pay off our student loans and build a nice life for ourselves. When I became a mother, I left the large law firm and went out on my own. I promised myself that if I had children, I would give my children what I earned, what I yearned for as a child. I opened my own office and brought, brought my daughter to work with me. She, she gave her caregiver, she and her caregiver had what should have been my conference room. Instead, it was a nursery and I met my clients in my office. When it came time to baptize my daughter, I wanted to ask my best friend to be her godmother, but knew that would be the final line in the sand with my sister. I spoke with my best friend about it and she agreed my sister to be, to be her godmother was the best decision. Why? Why? To avoid, to avoid the attack that's just gonna come for some other fucking reason? Okay, so what? Is she a good godmother to your daughter? No, I doubt that I can tell you she's not. Is she a good sister? No. Is she a good person? No. She's not even a good person. What makes you think she'd be a good godmother to your child? They're not good at anything. Other than destroying people's lives and hurting them, that's what they're good at. So you probably gave, you, 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 you denied your best friend, not denied, and they didn't do it in a cruel way, but somebody who probably would have been a great godmother to your child, you denied, so you wouldn't be attacked when she's just going to attack you for something else anyway. When I flew home for the baptism, my sister was drunk, <laughs> what a shock. And when, and when came to see, when I flew home for the baptism, my sister was drunk when, okay, when she came to see me and my baby girl, my aunt and uncle flew in from the West coast to celebrate with us while visiting my grandmother, my sister still drunk, told my aunt that I always get what she wants. After the baptism, my relationship with my sister seemed to improve really. 
my biggest issues came when she was drinking. So I tried to avoid being around her when she was drunk. I had a son two years, nine months later, and again, asked my sister to be his godmother. Of both kids? She gets to be godmother of both kids? Both? Wait, wait, wait. As soon as I thought, I'm like, okay, so now the friend's going to be the god. So you let her be the godmother of both your children? Why? My sister visited us regularly in Florida, and we go to Wisconsin regularly and used to stay with my sister. Some visits are better than others, depending on what's going on in my sister's life. She was married for 11 years and is now divorced with no children. She hates her job, but is unwilling to look for a different job. My children have always looked forward to our visits with my sister, and I thought my sister was growing as a person. She's not. She's using you. She's using you like your mother used you. She's using you the same way your mother uses you. Great, she comes to Florida. What a she's really putting herself out there to come here, right? To come to Florida from Wisconsin. Because it's not like cold or anything. You gotta understand your sister does you no favors that don't benefit her. She uses you. <sighs> This last April, I wanted to surprise my husband with a long weekend away for his 50th birthday. My uncles from the West Coast typically fly to Florida to take care of my children because we cannot trust my in-laws with our children. My uncles were not able to make the trip as they were here in January so that I could go on a business trip with my husband. For the first time, I asked my sister if she would come take care of my children. <laughs> I paid for a plane ticket and scheduled the trip as she asked. Now, she might, I don't know if she comes or not, ultimately, but if she did, she's going to be a bitch about it because you're not there to take care of her. She don't want to come there if you're not there because you're not there to wait on her hand and foot if she came at all. I paid for her plane ticket and scheduled the trip exactly how as she asked. I had points which I could have used to purchase her ticket. But she asked I use another airlines that offered a direct flight because she hates layovers. Her ticket to Florida cost, cost more than both my and my husband's tickets to Nashville. She told me she couldn't believe I asked her and commented that I would owe her one. I told her, yes, I did owe her one. When she arrived, she was disgruntled with her boss and one of her loser girlfriends. She told me she confronted her boss before she left. She also told me she was finally done with her loser girlfriend of over 30 years. My children, now 13 and 10, were looking forward to a weekend alone with my sister. I left my sister my credit card, my brand new vehicle, and cash. Less than 24 hours into their weekend, my sister got pissed off at my children because my son was pouting when his sister purchased ear pods at Target with her own money, and he was not able to buy a Lego for himself. My sister would not talk to my children on the way home from Target other than to tell them she didn't give up vacation. She didn't give up vacation time for them to not appreciate her. My daughter told me they apologized to her several times for their behavior, but my sister would not talk to them. That went on for several hours before my sister called, before my daughter called me. I told my daughter what to say to my sister, and my daughter told me she had already tried everything I suggested. I then told my children to buddy up and watch movies in my room for the day. She wanted to... I so wanted to come home, but I also didn't want to take away from my husband's weekend. He was very happy to be alone together, and he knew we would be home in 36 hours. My sister made herself dinner and put herself to bed without ever, without ever checking on my children. My children called me after 8 p.m., and I told them to make themselves a pizza and frozen lasagna. The next day, my sister called me. I told her to explain to my children what upset her and asked to start over. My sister followed my suggestions and then, then, and then they had a better day on Sunday. I returned on Monday and for the next five days, my, my sister repeatedly told me what brats my children were 
and that my sister should 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 be old enough should be old enough to know better than to be than than to egg her brother on of course anytime i have criticized my sister and younger brother for treating our mother poorly she would while she was dying, my sister tells me they were just kids and they cannot be held responsible. They were 19 and 16 at the time. I explained to my sister that she was the leader and it was her responsibility to lead my children while they were in her care. She did not respond. That night before she left, she was anxious about flying out early in the morning and was hounding me about whether I would wake up on time to drive her to the airport. I reached my limit and said, I got it. I can handle getting you there on time. She yelled at me and said it was important and left the room. She went to bed that night without saying goodnight to anyone and left without saying goodbye to my children because we had to leave for the airport at 4 a.m. I prayed myself to sleep, asking the Lord to get me to the airport without a confrontation. My sister asked me at Christmas to come home in June to attend the Paul McCartney concert with her at Lambeau Field on June 8th. After her trip, I was dreading going to the concert with her. About a month before the concert, my sister called me for the first time since leaving our house and asked me if she minded if I sold my ticket to the loser girlfriend whom she had told me she was done with when she was here, but now friends again because she broke up with her boyfriend. My sister, she's not, your sister's your mother. Your sister's your mother, Anonymous. Your sister's your mother. She's the reincarnated version. Your mother's sister, your mother's soul, narcissistic soul, entered your sister's body like the exorcist. Full control. Whereas your mother was the devil controlling everybody and everything. Once that body died, she jumped into your, into your sister's body and fully took it over. Metaphorically speaking, of course. She's your mother. She's your narcissistic mother now. It's like the exorcist. She jumped in there. It's all about her all the time. All about her all the time, just like your mom. My sister said she had three other tickets in another area of the stadium and asked if my friends would like if my friends would like to go with me. I took it as a gift from God and told my sister it was okay to sell my ticket to her loser friend and that it was better that I not come home that weekend because I will be making two other trips home this summer. So now for my question, after that very long-winded history, I am flying home for a long weekend this weekend for my class reunion. My husband supports me in my decision to get a hotel room versus staying with my sister. While I know it will be odd to be in a hotel room in my hometown, that is my plan. My daughter has asked me to speak with my has asked me to speak with my sister. I told my daughter if I say anything to my sister it would it would be to let her know that I am asking her to take care of my children it was the most important thing I have ever asked her to do and as far as I'm concerned she betrayed me and my family. My daughter appreciated that statement and asked me to tell my sister just that. I do not know that I want to say much about anything to my sister. I do not see how it will make our situation better. Yeah, it won't. What you should be doing is just be going no contact from her. Because your sister has done nothing but abuse you and take advantage of you your entire life. She's never grown up. She'd grow, she's never grown up. Grew up. She has never grew up. She never will. She is a child. She is a petulant child. And confronting her is what she wants because then she's going to turn herself into the victim and attack you. It's what they want. Call you a bitch. How many times in this letter have you say these people have called you a fucking bitch?
in the past, when I've confronted my sister or younger brother, they talk shit about me, whether true or not, with anyone who will listen. Once my sister flew out to visit our uncles and was speaking so poorly of me and my husband before my uncles ever met him. My uncle, my uncle told my sister that I would never marry someone as my sister described, but my sister continued on her rant. No, it's, and here's the other, here's the other piece of evidence that you should look at, that you should know that your mother and your sister are the same person. Nobody wanted to deal with your mother on her deathbed, just like nobody wants to deal with your sister. They're the same person. And the fact that everybody wanted, seems like they wanted to stay with distance themselves from your mother in the family tells me it's not the upbringing, it's her. Seems like the whole family was basically no or low contact with your mother for a very long time. And it seems the same way with your sister. My uncle told my sister that I would never marry someone as my sister described, but my sister continued on her rant. On the way from picking her up from the airport, my uncle stopped miles before reaching their destination and left my sister at Walgreens. Good. My sister had to call my other uncle to pick her up and did not see my uncle that left her for the remainder of that trip. My sister was the first to tell me this story when it happened as it would sympathize with her for my uncle's maltreatment, as I would sympathize with her for my uncle's maltreatment. I later spoke with my uncle. This is the same uncle who was the first person I called to tell him my mother and his sister was dying. He told me what my sister had said about me and my husband on the car ride. He said, he said she made my husband sound like a horrible person. My sister has maintained a friendship with my first husband, whom I have been divorced since 1998. I believe I would sell. I believe he would sell pot to my sister, and they would party together. My sister did not accept my second husband until after we had been married for over 10 years. Our father is 82 years old now, and I want him to enjoy what time I have left with him. My sister lives a few miles from my father, but only visits him on holidays and when I am home. She says I give him too much credit and that he is not such a good man as I think he is because she's your mother, because she's poisoning him, poisoning your opinion of him, just like your mother did. Your mother's spirit just jumped into your sister's body. That's all it is. Both my brothers also live in Wisconsin, and while they know my sister has a drinking problem and possibly a prescription drug problem, I know they will appease her as they see her regularly and only see me a few times a year. I have been studying narcissism for about a year now since my children shared with me the abuse my covert narcissist mother-in-law has put them through the last several years. I'm beginning to wonder if my sister is a narcissist. Yeah, she's a borderline personality disorder. Sister's a borderline. It's like your mother. My beloved uncle called me a few weeks ago after my other uncle told him my sister's visit did not go well. My beloved uncle told me it was my job to protect my children first and foremost, but he hoped he could put my angel wings. He hoped he could, I could put on my angel wings of, as, as I've always done in the past and find a way to bridge the gap. He said my children are the most positive thing my sister has in, life, in her life. And it would be sad if she lost that relationship. I told him I have I have forgiven her a thousand times and will forgive her again. But I would need time to decide how to handle the relationship with my sister. Why? Why are you forgiving her? She hasn't asked for your forgiveness, nor has she earned it. Why are you giving forgiveness the narcissist hasn't earned or asked for? Why? You forgive her, she just uses you again and again. It's a shit leopard. It's a burning hot stove. It doesn't change its spots. 
You keep fucking with it, you're going to get shit all over you. That's what happens when you fuck with a shit leopard. Your sister's a shit leopard. And you're giving her forgiveness she hasn't asked or deserved. Asked for or deserves. I told him I would have forgiven her a thousand times and will forgive her again, but I would need time to decide how to handle my relationship with my sister. I do my best to give my children space and build their own relationships. My children have told me that when I take them to Wisconsin next month, they want to see as little of my sister as possible, and they definitely do not want to stay at her house. So we will get a hotel and minimize our time with her, but I still do not know whether I should confront my sister about neglecting my children and abusing them with the silent treatment or abuse or or her dumping me to go to the concert again now and again with loser girlfriend again actions speak to narcissists words words provoke conflict actions such as no contact complete and cold, total no contact says everything and the best part is they can't even attack you. As a mother, I want to do what's best for my children. And it's important to my daughter that my sister know how much she hurt them. Thank you for taking the time to read this. I know it's lengthy, but as is the case for others in similar situations, it's complicated and our history directly impacts our relations today. I look forward to hearing your responses. I know it will be honest and straightforward and most likely will offer constructive criticism of me. I hope you continue to feel better and are able to continue your work of educating people about the ab abusive and toxic people in our lives. I can only imagine the drain it can have on you emotionally, and, but, hope it, but hope it also helps you continue to heal from your experiences. Sincerely, Anonymous. She hasn't asked for forgiveness, Anonymous. Stop making excuses for every narcissist in your life. Your mother's not a victim. Your mother made choices, just like your sister. Okay? And what you have to realize is, yeah, the narcissist died. Your main one died. Okay? But she jumped into another body, your sister's, just like the exorcist. And you have to realize what that is, that is a manipulative liar you're dealing with, okay? And if you talk to it, just like just like the movie The Exorcist, if, you, if you're familiar with that movie, if you watch that movie, what does the older priest say to the younger priest before they go into that room? He said, don't engage that monster. That monster is a liar. That monster is going to mix the lies with the truth. You can't believe it. You can't believe anything that comes out of its mouth because it's a manipulative liar. And as soon as that younger priest started buying that, what did that older priest do? Threw him out of the room. Get out. You're done. You're done. You've already, you've already susceptible to that beast. And what was that beast able to do? When that younger priest went in after he killed the old the old priest, he's able to jump in that body and take it over. And that's what your mother did. And that's what your sister's doing. Your sister is the is the narcissist exorcist. Just looking for a body. Just looking for a body. Okay? And you're just repeating the same tactics over and over again. You're giving your mother too much. You're giving her. These are choices she makes. These are choices you make. A grown-ass woman she knows not to leave children home alone while you're going out getting fucked. She knows. Don't have sex with your boyfriend on a couch where if your daughter's sleeping. If you, they don't care. And all that was meant to manipulate you and use you and to get you to do all their dirty work for them. And that's all your sister's continuing to do. You have to show your children 
right and wrong. And you need to make a statement with your children and say, you know what? How your aunt acted isn't right. It isn't right for me. It isn't right for you. And none of us are talking to her. We're done because it's toxic. Because she's not sorry. She hasn't apologized. She's not asking for forgiveness, nor does she deserve it. So why are you looking to give her any? So I hope that helps. Thank you so much for your contribution and your story, Anonymous. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below if you're still here. And if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, or have a private video made, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful, because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.